with this electromagnetic spectrum, we have discussed how all of it is either harmful or unharmful, where you find the difference at. So in this, where do you find the difference? Where's the switch? Going from not harmful to harmful. I'm still waiting. Wait, what'd you ask? Where on the electromagnetic spectrum do we see the difference between something being harmful or not harmful? With the white box. With the white box. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, numbers are even better, but past visible light when we go into ultraviolet is it harmful or un not harmful harmful, harmful. Oh. this ladies and gentlemen I now have a special gift for you take one pass it around Christian for Dave please go to Miss Crystal Thomas's room not nearly enough in this one They'll make their way around. Giving you your own personal electromagnetic spectrum is the same thing as over there. Now in this, so that y'all know, you will still have my electromagnetic spectrum up there during the quiz to identify different sets of different things. For her discussed, I will not be here on the 15th or the 18th. Which I'm pretty sure the 18th don't matter to this class. <coughs> Yeah, 18. It's three hour early dismissal. <laughs> Y'all have a fantastic time. Alright, so on here. Oh no, you'll have it on Tuesday. This Tuesday coming up? He's not going to be here this Tuesday. No. This Friday's a lab. So it would be the following, not the Tuesday after that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so we should have it then. It's going to be Tuesday the 22nd. That's when we'll have the quiz. All right, so in this, we've talked a lot about this electromagnetic spectrum, and now we're going to start using some information. We've talked about three things. It's time to relate these three things together. With this, you're going to learn two constants. You must memorize the constant. My favorite one's the second one. You're going to see why. It's a stupid little simple way I came up with memorizing it. So here's your first formula, ladies and gentlemen. C equals lambda and nu. C equals lambda and nu. Look how I'm now here, paper. Christian to the alpha. Christian today. Thank you, Mr. Coach. All right, so in this, C is your constant. You've heard of this constant before. C stands for the speed of light. Is that in purple? Yes. Okay. Speed of light. Many people will look at you and say, oh, it's just 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. No, we care about accuracy and precision in this class. Ladies and gentlemen, 2.98 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That is the speed of light. Nothing is faster. 10 to the 8th. Why don't you just move closer to where you can see things? Yeah, like that stops everybody. Okay. 
And from here, these other two you've already seen. Lambda, which is wavelength. And nu, which is frequency. Important thing to stress here. Notice your constant. It has meters per second. If you're going to work all this, what do you think wavelength is going to have to be in? Meters. Meters. Dead giveaway. Now, the second formula is my personal favorite. But it's so much fun. E for energy equals the letter H, the American letter H, the letter H you learned in kindergarten and first grade, that H, nothing lower, lower, lowercase. lowercase, nothing lower. nothing different about it. Why, why is it lowercase? Because it's constant. And that's how it's known. And U. Is that a U or a new? New. That's new. Can I get an E for effort on my quiz? Wouldn't it technically be lower than an F? <laughs> you never know. No, because so, it goes A, a B, C, D. I know, but like some schools, the E's equal A. Like oh, school. whatever. Seriously. Um, well, we're not living in Charleston. Well, we, we are in the black All right, so... Here is your constant. It's the letter H. And this is by the mad daddy man himself. The man, the myth, the legend above. All thing else. Anybody got a guess? Not Einstein. That's what everybody goes for. I had to say it. The greatest discovery, though, it is argued that this is his greatest discovery, was Einstein. This is Planck's constant. Planck. Huh? Planck. So, so H equals... Energy, right? Yeah, I'm going to write it in a second. So H equals Planck's It's Planck's constant. With this... Now I know you're talking to people. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it. Oh, yeah, we didn't that. Okay. Planck's constant is my favorite, and this is why. Easy way to remember this. Six point stitch. Huh? Six point stitch. Oh. Experiment six to six. Oh. <laughs> That's the one that eats the... Sandwiches is too five. I forgot about that. Yeah. Stitch. Like Lilo and Stitch. Six two six. That's his number. That was his number. Oh, Just get out. Great. Get out. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Times ten and negative thirty-four. And here's the units. And I'm gonna stress this: joule seconds. It's joule seconds. It's joules times seconds. Okay? I'm pretty sure a grade E would be higher than that. Not my book. <laughs> And from here, like I already told you, E stands for energy, and U stands for frequency. Please notice something in here. These two can be used interchangeably because they have something in common. What's in common? The new. The new. 
the frequency. Frequency is the same. So in this, you can be asked eh, different little scenarios. So let's go with a hard problem. And then we'll start cracking it down easier, okay? So, what type of photon has an energy of 3.5? times 10 to negative 19 joules. You probably have the question here. I already heard it. What is a photon? We'll get to dividing a photon a lot more later on. A photon is just a quantum of energy. Now, Question. We're going to say it's one of those couch beds. <laughs> what? They're being sarcastic. I'm going to ask if it's one of those couch beds. No, but they're cousins. Wow. What Goodbye. is it, man? <laughs> it's a quantum energy. Photon has an energy of 3.65 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now, this is the thing where I'm giving you this for a reason. You're going to have to use this. So, in this, you have a choice. This is what I'm going to tell you I'm going to go for. Every time I'm doing this, I'm going to go for wavelength because wavelength is a whole lot easier to read. Because if I can get it in meters, it's a whole lot easier for me to have to read and deal with. You can use frequency, but I like to use meters. So, in this, well, wavelength. So in this, start it up. You're going to use both equations in this case. Here's how you know whether you're going to use both equations or not. You're either given frequency or you're asked to find frequency. Are y'all okay? No. This man's got me on What do you mean? What? What's the meaning? Who wanted the calculator? Like what's the number? You have to calculate it. How? Using the formulas. Anyone else? But mu is in the formula. Just let me work this, Chrissy. Alright, so in this, this is what you're going to do. Take the formula you have something already set for. So in this case, where are we starting? <coughs> Energy. Start with energy. Which one of our equations uses e energy? E equals H nu. Okay, so write it down. E equals Planck's constant times frequency. Okay, in this case, what can I what am I looking for that's going to help me? What are they related together through? Nu. So if I can find frequency, nu, then we can work back to find wavelength. So in this, you got to rearrange the formula to find frequency is equal to energy divided by Planck's constant. I'm so lost. Why'd you do that? Because I'm trying to get frequency by itself. Oh. So whatever we want by itself, we put it on the equal side. Well, I just divided everything by Planck's constant. Okay, I'll go step by step. Sorry. Our math skills are killing us. All right, what's going on here? 
Multiplication. So to get frequency by itself, what do I have to do with Planck's constant? Divide by Planck's constant. Planck's constant cancels, leaves me with frequency equals energy divided by Planck's constant. Okay, so equals, now fill in. 3.65 times 10 to the negative 19 joules divided by Planck's constant, 6 point stitch, joule seconds. This is where the units come into play. The joules cancel and it leaves me with seconds on the bottom which is equal to inverse seconds, which is 1 over seconds, or seconds to the negative 1, and it's also known as hertz. So in this, we punch that in the calculator. You should, by this point, be able to punch this stuff in the calculator, hopefully. 3.65. Hopefully you come up with 5.5086 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Bless you. I love you. I'm saying this right now because people in this room missed points on the quiz because you couldn't punch something in the calculator right. You should take a calculator right now and punch this in. And if you can't figure out how to punch it in right now, that's where you need to ask. Okay, I need your help. Yes. Because this is equal to inverse seconds, which is equal to seconds to negative one, or just negative, which is equal to hertz. So if it's J, then it's H, H, whatever, HZ. Right? Like if we're in jewels, yeah, I got negative fifty four, negative ten to the negative. So I still get zero. I got fourteen. I got fourteen. I got that up there. But I got it. You see, calculate. As soon as you put the multiplication, the calculator was reading it as you're multiplying it. We don't have to we don't put it in the negative. Negative exponents? Yeah, we do. Come here, I don't think you're so confused about that. What do you mean you put multiplication? She put a multiplication in there. You shouldn't do it times T, but it's the wrong thing. Does he mean like you have to do the. In parentheses. Then from here we're dividing. So divide by 6.626 seconds. Anybody else? Because I got a new app that I bought, and it's supposed to be the same thing as the Why is it? Try to see if it works. No, because we're not done yet. This isn't the end. This is the first step. Well, yes. Do what? It's inverse seconds. It's a unit that we came up with. It's one over, like if you do this, okay. This is what I do in physics all the time. Kids don't understand where the units are coming from. You have joules over joules times seconds. What cancels? Joules cancel. 
But that doesn't make this seconds. That is wrong. Wow. Because seconds is on the bottom. It still has to stay on the bottom. So there's no number one on top. It's one over seconds. Which is also a mathematical expression. You can write it like that. Seconds to the negative. And in science, we look at this as hertz. You can. So the S and the now you put times at E. Okay, even you can't I, mix them. Even if I don't, I still get negative. Um, I put that in the negative negative equal to. That's why I don't like using it. Because then if you're going to do this. I say always put them in parentheses because of that right there. Your calculator is stupid. See, I didn't put them in parentheses. I didn't put them in parentheses. But that's the thing. Your calculator is reading what you put in separately than what she's putting. You put something totally different. It's all about your calculator is stupid. Your calculator is not going to sit there, and it's not smart. It doesn't look and say, oh, well, they're wanting to do this problem that's up on the board. Let me make sure you calculate that right for them. They're going to look and say, okay, well, they set that up. I think they're wanting to do this and then times that by negative 34. I think. Oh, okay. It pops out negative 55. So you know, this time I just got 54, whatever. That's why it matters. I put like instead I put times ten and then e so that matches me. Don't put the times ten and the e. All right, then from here you're not done because you have found frequency. Now if you want to give us a shot off that frequency, be my guest. Wait, what? It's nice. If you want to give this a shot from frequency, go ahead. But this is the thing. I'm going to say it's non infrared because that's times 10. That's 1 times 10 to the 14th right there that you're looking right at in infrared. Between times 10 to the 14 and times 10 to the 15, you have infrared, visible, or ultraviolet. And you're falling right in the middle. So I'm going to tell you from me looking at this, I think we're going to end up with some visible light. I'm so confused. <laughs> This is what you're doing. You're trying to identify what type of ray this is. I need any AM trace What type? What type of radio? Uh, electromagnetic radiation is it? Radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays. And so it's not radio. Because I'm looking at this number right here. I have, I have the frequency. So over here, on your peer, on your not peer, okay, on your. Uh. Water milk. Bless you. Sweet apples. Strawberry. Ah. I heard a little, but I'm okay. Okay, on here, this is what I'm saying. You're following in this area. If you're watching the video, close your eyes. <laughs> you're following somewhere between here. In here, because you're 10 to the 14th. This is one times 10 to the 14th, and this is one times 10 to the 15th. I can still fall in there somewhere back behind here. Anywhere back behind here is still times 10 to the 14th. Now this is the thing: when you're looking at that problem you have up there, that 5.5086 times 10 to the 14th hertz. That's telling me I'm falling somewhere in here, and since that's about halfway, we're looking halfway in here somewhere. So you're looking at visible light. So now you're breaking from visible light, and this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I want to know the color. Uh, green. No. Um, it's right in the middle. It's 
Careful. Careful. Notice this down here. That's nanometers. Is that frequency or wavelength? You're dealing with wavelength. So you can't go from here to there. So it's red. You can't do it. You can solve it because you now have frequency. <laughs> Watch the video, close your eyes. <laughs> so you can't use wavelength to do it. No, you need to use wavelength. That's what I'm telling you. But you can't get solid in there because if you go to visible light, I'm going to ask you to give me the color. I'm going to use frequency. Okay, you're saying red. So in this case, you're just taking a shot in the dark. Yeah. No, I'm going to say green. So you're well, saying green. Yellow is definitely red. I say like in between the orange. If I'm guessing, where I'm going to say we're somewhere red in green or the yellow. I said yellow too. Really? But you're just guessing. Yes. You're just guessing. Wait, don't you already know the answer. I don't. I literally just created this problem out of my head. Right, so in this, you've now solved for this, so now you can move on to find the wavelength because you now have frequency. And what links the two together? Frequency. So in this, we can look and say, speed of light, wavelength times frequency, but I need wavelength. How do I get wavelength by itself? We're multiplying here. You divide both sides by frequency. Which one's lambda? Lambda. <laughs> so wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by frequency. So now we come in here, we figure this one out. Speed of light, 2.98 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Divided by 5.5086 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, going back to the second. So why are we getting hertz? Where did you get 2.98? I got 2.98 from here. It's the constant. It's It doesn't change. Okay. Anybody else lost? Because well, everybody was going nuts. I'm good now. I should know where you was. Where you used to get So now in this, we're going to do that in the calculator. Do, 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 do. Here comes the fun part. That's a lot of numbers. That's not a lot, but it's... All right, before I uncover this number, please understand that I stored this number in my calculator. I didn't put the 5.5086. I took the 5.5086.02475 e to the 14. I stored that in the calculator to give me this. Whenever I did the math. I did that because it makes my math in the calculator a lot faster because then I can just do 2.98 e to the 8 divided by A because I store it as, as A. Thank you. My calculator got clear. You didn't just type that in? And I thought the whole thing was hard. I got that answer, but I got several zeros in front of it. I didn't get that number. So what, is what color was it? This is the answer I got. Same thing. Do I just Look at my exponent. Negative seven. So. What I do? This is better than What it is, it's the same thing, but it doesn't have it in a scientific notation like I do. Yeah. Yours just has it out as an expression. How did you get that? I didn't get the same answer. So every number is. Can I have you close the numbers? 
How did you get yep. that five point four? Okay, here's what I've done. All right, so this is what I'm saying I've done. I don't have that show. I just got to show the screen. All right, if you're watching the video, close your eyes. Open your eyes. I don't know if you can see it on the video or not. I'll talk you through it. All right, so on this, here's what I've done. I did that first problem like what I told you, right? Here's that first problem I set up in my calculator. It gave me 5.5086024754E14. But I told you just round four places past the decimal. What we did to give us 5.5086 times 10 to the 14th. A lot of you is going to punch that back in the calculator. But instead of me doing it, I just stored my answer from that as A. You don't have to, but I'm telling you this ahead of time because so many of y'all are going to freak out. Do so what I got, Mr. Hall. I got 5.4081. How do you do that? This is how you do it. I don't know if it's going to show up good or not. All right, this is how you do it. You literally take... <laughs> This is what you're going to do, okay? So on here, you're wanting to store it. So down here, right, right here is the on button. Right above it, this STO with an arrow is stored. So you hit it, and now it's saying whatever was there, we're going to store it as something. So now you have to go to the alpha key, which is the green key, and then you just choose one of the letters, all the green letters that are going through here. So I'm going to do B. So alpha, hit the apps button because i got the green B right here and hit enter. That now stores B as that number. So if I type it in something, I can just go like one times alpha B. Instead of having to type all that stuff out. I'm going to do two times alpha B. So it just saves everything for me. That's what I'm saying I did there so that nobody freaks out on me. All I did is I took I punched in the light constant, so in parentheses, 2.98, e to the 8, in parentheses, divided by A, because I stored our frequency as A. Okay? Now comes the fun part. That wasn't the fun part. That was so this whole thing's fun for me. I had a blast. You're not finished. You have wavelength now, so you can do something with it, but take a look at something. This is in nanometers. What are we in? So guess what we have to do? The prefix chart. You got to do a prefix conversion. So in this case, I'm just going to do it over here. So, 5.4. Zero. Nine seven times ten to the something another. So now we gotta find what something another is. So we're starting at meters. So I have to go from meters to nanometers. Meters as the base unit, so zero minus the change in the prefix. What's the prefix? New prefix we're going to. <coughs> Nano. Which is Negative nine. Negative nine. So subtracting the negative, adding a positive, gives you nine. But you're not done because you have to add to it what you originally started with. Plus negative seven because that's what we got up there, which equals two. 
So 2. So we're dealing with 5.4097 times 10 to the second. If you punch that in the calculator, or you just look and say, what's 10 squared? 100. 100. 100, so 100 times 5.4097 gives you 540.97. Nanometers. Well, it's just taking a while because it's the first time y'all saying it. It's going to take me a while to quiz, too. No, it's the first time you've seen it. You're all freaking out. That's like first. Remember the first time we did a mole problem like this? Wait, took so whole this time. is hard. No, this is hard. Yeah, this is hard. So what? How you say it was fun. When you get that, is that how many places you move the decimal? Oh, don't say that. You don't just move the decimal. Multiply and divide by factors of ten. You multiplied by ten twice. Or you look and you say you multiply by 10 squared, which is 100. So it is 540.97 nanometers. Now, where's that going to fall at? We got to choose the color. Notice something. Here's 500. Here's 600. You're looking at 540. We're about right in here. It's 550, so about right there, somewhere in there is about 540. So what color? What color? Ugh, what color? What color? Green. What color is our photon? Green. Green. Watching video. Close your eyes. Oh, it matters. So we gotta say green yellow? Then it's green. But if it was green yellow. You put green yellow, I'll give it. I ain't I ain't that big when it's big. Well, I don't know, it is chemistry. Photon is visible light. Of the color green. Understand, if you stop here at frequency, you're not right. If you stop here at solving for wavelength, you're not right. Answer the question being asked of you, what type of photon? This photon is visible light. And within that, I'm asking going to ask you for a color. It just happened this fell in the light phase, the visible light phase. The color green. Do you have any questions? Can we see it? No, that's pretty much I actually love that. Yes. Alright, I'm going to tell you what I told sweet little Alexis Cunningham. Speak with confidence. Let the inner beast out. Speak, child. Ask your question. It's like you got quiet. I cannot hear you. Speak. Okay, we didn't we didn't convert it. We solved for it because there's a relationship between the two. Are you talking? You don't understand why I went from joules and joule seconds to hertz? What is it? You said. One over S, right? Yeah. The negative. How many the S? Okay, but what if the S is in the problem? Then second. The S won't be on top. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's moving per second, and then a little ball of it's hertz. Is that because we're solving to get moving? Like, is that wrong? Yes, because whenever you look at this, what's hertz? Hertz is also equal to inverse second. So this is meters per second divided by 1 over second. Whenever you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it is meters per second times seconds over one. Seconds cancel to give you meters.
Okay. That makes a lot more sense.